I was going outside to refill my dog's water bowl. I didn't think anything of it. I reached down, picked the bowl up. As I lifted it up, I felt something hit the side of my hand. I would equate that feeling to being stung by a wasp, and in fact, that's what I thought it was at first. Coiled under Justin Miller's dog's water bowl was one of these guys, the copperhead. I threw the bowl down, and uh, I saw the two fang marks in the side of my finger and blood coming out of both of them. I have watched enough Discovery Channel to know that that was a poisonous snake that just that bit me. Within uh, 10 minutes or so, it became horrible. So we just shot over to Rex. I had no idea what to do. I had never thought that I'd be bitten by a poisonous snake. But tis the season, and Miller is just one of hundreds of people bitten every year in North Carolina. The most common time that we see poisonous snake bites are when the temperatures are warmer. So we see it April to October. We have already seen the spike, uh, especially in the last couple of weeks. There are six species of venomous snakes in our state, but the copperhead is by far the most common and found in every county from over 4,000 feet in the mountains to uh, down at uh, sea level on the coast. The only place in the state that we have no copperhead records are on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Well, we can't all move to the Outer Banks, so we asked renowned herpetologist Alvin Braswell to tell us more about copperheads. He took us inside the state's reptile collection. They are a warm season animal, and they like to be active when the temperatures are warm. So in the heat of the summer, they are primarily active at dusk to after dark. They can live in a lot of places, but they are primarily a woodland animal and at the edge of woodlands. You don't have to be paranoid, you just have to be aware. Sometimes copperheads don't release venom at all. That's called a dry bite. If they do, Braswell says the bite will hurt, bad. But we're lucky that copperhead venom is relatively mild. Snake venom. Uh, a copperhead or the, any of them, is primarily a food-getting mechanism and secondarily a defensive mechanism. Deaths from copperhead bites are virtually non-existent. If you see a snake, copperheads have distinctive characteristics. The venomous snakes, our pit vipers, copperhead, rattlesnakes, and the cottonmouth, have an elliptical pupil in the eye like a cat's eye, not a round one like we have. The pattern on the copperhead is quite distinctive. I have characterized it and photographed uh, a copperhead with some Hershey's Kisses beside it. So the shape of the Hershey's Kiss sort of matches the shape of the uh, band that goes around. A really good characteristic for newborn copperheads is they have a lemon yellow tail tip. So what do you do if you get bit? Getting medical treatment is a necessity, not an option. The first thing to do if you get bitten by a snake is to get far enough away so that you don't get bit again. They sometimes will strike twice. Sitting down, keeping your legs still as possible, and being as calm as possible is going to be the most important thing. The venom seems to travel more when we get more excited, do more activity, and our heart rate increases, and therefore the poisonous symptoms uh, and the venomation can get worse. The whole myth about sucking the venom out? Yeah, don't do that. Call 911. And most of the time, people get monitored in the emergency room, they get fluids, we do serial checks and exams, and then the patients are able to go home after about six hours. Some people do get more serious reactions, and we do monitor for that with both blood tests as well as physical exam checks. There are some times where the reaction can be very severe and very fast, and the sooner that we can get treatment in, the better. That's what happened to Miller. They didn't bat an eye, immediately had me in the back. Because of the nature of the bite, and how much venom I received from the snake, uh, they wound up having to give me um, six vials of anti-venom. His finger was terribly swollen, and he was at risk of heart complications. My blood pressure was staying constant at about 210 over 160, which is way over what it normally should be. Um, I was in an incredible amount of pain. The only thing that I could really equate it to when people ask is, it felt like I was on fire on the inside, like I was burning on the inside. After six days here at Rex, Miller got to go home, but had another six weeks of physical therapy. He said it took two years until he got feeling back in his finger. It was, it really though was, was a great experience at the hospital. The, the folks at Rex were really good about being able to work with me, um, help keeping me calm and, and figuring out what's the best solution as this continues to uh, to advance, I, you know, I, I'm certainly thankful to the folks that uh, that worked with me at Rex, as well as um, the folks at, at physical therapy afterwards. So, as the temperatures get warmer, keep an eye out for these copperheads. 
unless it's in a situation where something must be done to move it or, or eliminate it, just leave it alone. And one final bit of wisdom from Miller. The best advice that I can give every person is kick whatever it is that you're looking to pick up outside before you pick it up.